Good Monday morning, and welcome to Ice Age TV, the internal combustion engine age YouTube channel that talks about all my cars and trucks and motorcycles, SUVs, the dogs, the kid, the property, the state of times, the attitudes. Hey, good Monday morning. Wow, another Monday morning here upon us here in the North Virginia, Maryland area, and not too cold out, actually pretty decent out, 50s today. A little overcast, but uh, wow, hey, thanks for everybody that uh, tunes in on my morning conversations. Appreciate all the support and all the help I can get, <laughs> and uh, really do enjoy talking, and I enjoy the comments, so uh, thanks so much. If you're watching for the first time this morning, as I just take a word of the day, and we create it into the car of the day, and then we create it to the, the state of times, and, uh, and where's the dogs, right? One, two, three. Where's the fourth one? He's inside the house. He's hungry. He's hanging out with Kiefer and uh, figuring he's get some food with Kiefer for breakfast with the kid. What a weekend. Jesus Christ. Wow. You know what's really interesting here is a lot of people, I'm sure, look at my fleet of vehicles and they probably think, man, this guy's insurance bill is probably huge. Yeah, I get a big insurance bill. No doubt about that. And I thought, wow, what a great conversation to start the week off. But insurance, yes, insurance. And insurance is such a broad industry that takes care of so many different things in our life, from the cars we own, to the homes we own, to your life insurance, car insurance, truck insurance, motorcycle insurance. So yeah, I think that the, uh, the insurance, and you'd say, well, what spurred that conversation, Mr. Iceman. Well, the computer truck. Hey, well, the computer truck, aka the cyber truck, um, spurred that conversation because of the electric vehicles. What the electric vehicles are doing to the automotive insurance industry, um, it's changing things. And it's more challenging for the insurance companies to uh, pay out these big um, bills that are costing the consumers. You say, really, it's costing consumers more money. It's costing insurance companies more money. So let's get... And my Willow, Willie, as we come into the the uh, the muscle garage, right? The ice garage. And I got my Honda hat on today. Had my Honda hat on yesterday. Thought I'd change it up a little bit. And uh, and so, some you know, I just love Hondas. And you know what? I don't know why the Kentucky kid... I think that's what they called him. I don't know why the Kentucky kid Nikki Hayden popped in my head this morning. I don't know why. Because of my Honda hat and I'm such a Honda guy. Yeah, if, if you're a, a Moto a, a Moto GP guy, uh, Nikki Hayden and his family, and his brother, it was a huge uh, the Moto GP guys, the crazy guys that go around these on um, these crotch rockets at 100 mile an hour runs and. They race, you know, just an incredible, incredible sport. And I used to watch that a lot back so many years ago. I don't really watch it much anymore, but I was always a Nicky Hayden fan. And for those that really know of him, sadly, he died uh, on a bicycle. I believe he killed himself on a bicycle in England, I think, uh, which is crazy because you'd say anybody that rides those type of motorcycles and does what he does, you'd probably figure that the odds are it's going to be dies on a motorcycle. Yeah, so uh, wonder what the insurance uh, payout was for him on the, uh, you know, his, I'm sure he had life insurance. So anyway, so here we are. Um, and once again, it's all about the computer truck, the cyber truck. I mean, cyber truck was such a cool thing to see revealed and it's everybody's, it's a, it's a talk of town. And once again, here we are looking at the electric vehicles. And so what you're hearing about in the automotive industry is these cars, when they get damaged, there just isn't as many body shops that are really um, you know, ready for this type of technology with all the different equipment they may need and the battery packs. And it's just a minor accident can be very expensive. And I've heard stories of the Rivian truck having anybody hit the back of the uh, Rivian truck just in a very minor 
uh, back end crash, uh, I could be wrong. What is what I think I've heard is it could be up to a $60,000 bill to replace the modular bed. So the Rivian truck is really, uh, uh, that's the worst story I've heard. But then we all hear these stories of people that own the Teslas, especially in the very earlier years, they would get in a crash and they would lose the capability of having their car for quite some time because they just didn't have the parts. They didn't have the, the resources to fix them. So you look at these cars and we all know these cars have so much technology, technology in them. You get the sensors in them. You've got the uh, cameras in them. Uh, just, you know, the, the, the materials they're using. You've got the wheel motors here um, versus the conventional. You know, there's, there's so many different aspects of these electric cars that should you get in a, you know, a decent accident, significant accident, is apparently this becomes a very expensive put the vehicle back. And also it spurred the conversation was that computer truck, the cyber truck, the windshield, when you see the size of that windshield of that truck, it's massive. <laughs> and you just think, they claim it's a very, you know, uh, chip resistant, rock resistant. It, it's got some really credible interior in it. And, and um, I should say, whatever, it came, the way it's designed, it sounds like it'd be very difficult for it to have issues. But if it did, what would it be the price of that? Unsure, you know, what would be the price set? I know for a fact that when you go forward direct, I've already had two of my windshields replaced on these um, adaptive cruise style vehicles. I had a Ford uh, Explorer, no, Expedition, that I had a crack in the windshield that I get replaced. And then I've had this truck here that I had get the, uh, the windshield replaced. That can be a $1,500 bill. If you go with the Ford factory windshield very expensive you go aftermarket it can be like a thousand bucks so you know they're just that windshield okay and then you have to have the recalibration for the hands-free driving so that could be like another 300 dollar bill that the uh, glass shop has to have and so that's a very common thing now it isn't just the glass that you're replacing it's the calibration that all that technology is in that glass with that uh, rear view mirror, you have the cameras. So you have to pay an hour $300 just to have everything so the car can have the adaptive cruise control or the uh, self-driving. So once again, the insurance, the insurance premiums are going up. And what they say is that a person owns an electric vehicle, the national average is $100, per, it's like $109 per month more for insurance over what you're paying for the ice so you know we talk you know we talk about this i think everybody sees i think people that start getting interested in the electric cars I, i've said it a thousand times on our youtube channel the number one thing i think people think is it's going to be cheaper as far as you know driving the car because you don't buy gas anymore <laughs> it's just like yeah but eh, yeah right okay it gets deep and heavy i've talked about it a million times but but here's the point if you don't let your car, your insurance premium will be higher. And the Rivian apparently is starting to get, uh, you know, tagged. So, you know, what what is that premium on a vehicle? And since I have, you know, some vehicles in Virginia tagged, some vehicles tagged in Florida, the insurance premiums are radically different from Virginia to Florida. I mean, it can be close to three times as much for me to insure some of my vehicles in the Florida and others in Virginia. And why? Well, Florida, it's just the dominant state of the older people and the uninsured people. So Florida's challenge is there's so many people over the years that drive around uninsured. Well, you got a lot of birds very active this morning. So, so anyway, so, the, so Florida is a very expensive, and we always talk about this too. In Florida, you get a free windshield. And I tell people, you don't get a free windshield. Because in Florida, if you have a windshield claim, you don't pay anything. It's maybe, I don't think you even paid a deductible. So it's very, it's a cool thing. But if you're paying $3,000 a year versus, say, $1,500 a year, um, you know, is it a cool thing? Because that means you're buying a windshield every year, per se, in Florida. Um, 
the insurance on motorcycles, something I don't think a lot of people realize, is the, um, the coverage is for the motorcycle. And whatever damage, property damage you do to another vehicle, and that's it. But I think some people think that if you're on a motorcycle and you're in a motorcycle accident and you come off that bike they and you get severely injured, I think people think that you're now insured by your motorcycle insurance. You're not. <laughs> For those out there that own a motorcycle, I'm sure a lot of people know that. But at the same time, I'm not sure so many people know that. So if you own a motorcycle and you have insurance on it, the insurance is only for you doing damage to another you know, piece of property and for the property that you're on. So if your motorcycle gets in, you know, totaled or has to be fixed or whatever, or you do severe damage to the person's vehicle or take somebody's mailbox out or their front, you know, you know their front property fence line. This stuff goes on all the time and people are daredevils on their motorcycles. And so you're not covered for the insurance to be at the hospital. You have to have your own separate insurance policy, health care policy. Um, and something that people don't realize as well on their health care uh, policy, when do you think the Indian deal goes down? When do you think the Indian deal goes down? When do you think they buy it back? You know, it's interesting. The other day, I came home from the Honda, Timber Honda, when I got my new tank bag. And I was thinking this was the tank bag. Okay, so I thought to myself, I was like, that thing's massive. It's massive. And all of a sudden, you know, later in the day, I was like, what are you, this is the rear. This is for the rear seat pad if I want to strap this down to have some capability on my Honda CB1000R, which that's pretty cool because that's a decent sized bag where I can put some stuff in there on water bottles, first aid kit, and then I got my tank bag as well. So that's pretty cool. But at first I was like, wow, that thing's massive. It looked dorky, but now I'm pretty, uh, pretty content. So, but here's another thing that, but insurance, I'm drinking my coffee. You can look at the motorcycles here as you do on a regular basis. Or you can look at the smoke show here that hasn't been driven in ages. So, or we can look at the Mustang Dark Horse, which I did something special. We'll talk about that in a second. So on the uh, motorcycle insurance, sadly, people that get injured, but it's in, it's in more than just the motorcycle. It could be on the bicycle. It could be you're on a ladder. Um, a lot of people don't realize that there's a clause that may be in your insurance policy or maybe not that's called impact insurance. And this is factual. So anybody who's watched my channel, you'd be very beneficial for you, yourself, spouse, your father, mother, whoever you know, to tell them to look up their insurance policy and what it actually covers. Because believe it or not, a lot of Healthcare insurance policies do not have what you call impact insurance, meaning that if you fall off a ladder and you get injured, the hospital doesn't cover the, the hospital bill that you'll get. Your insurance provider doesn't pay for that. Okay, now some of you say, No way. <laughs> well, I've heard stories of it, I know true stories of it, and unless uh, the, the newer mandates of healthcare have force the health insurance companies to rewrite their policies, um, I don't think it's changed, meaning that you have to ask for impact insurance and the health care provider you have, it may not even offer it. So it's very important for anybody sitting here watching my channel that I'm sharing with you is good information because it's a, uh, it's a problem. People that get injured from impact, from falling down, um, never realize after they get a three hundred thousand dollar bill from insurance uh, for the hospital that their insurance company is not going to take care of that. So, and that's what's very important for anybody who owns a motorcycle. You better make sure that you have impact insurance because <laughs> when you come off that bike, it's going to be an impact um, claim. So, just some information. Anybody there's watch my channel. That's I think you know very useful for a lot of people. Some may know about it. I'd be willing to bet a lot of people don't know about it. Um, okay, so here's the dark horse. And, yeah, I drove it home. That's all I've done because the weather was so lousy. A week ago, Monday, this will be a one-week-old um, purchase. 
So it was, it went to Monday. It went to Monday. And if you're watching my channel, you right now know I've got a deal that's supposed to go to Monday of it being a Ford um, Raptor, F-150 truck Raptor. And could it even be something else if you're really watching my channel. But okay, so here's, here's the breaking news. I ordered the Whipple Supercharger for the Ford Mustang Dark Horse. Wow. I mean, wow. The first time I've ever actually done a supercharger. I usually buy the cars and they're already set up. But this will be the first for me of an actual bolt-on supercharger that's going to take this car from 500 horsepower to, you know, over 700 horsepower. I got the Whipple um, Blue, the Grabber Blue um, color. So it's going to be the Ford Blue, whatever you call it. So I had to pay extra $600 just to get that really cool color. So when you pop the hood, you see that really cool um, Whipple Supercharger. And I just and I went with the detune Whipple Charger, uh, that Whipple Supercharger that gives you a three-year, thirty-six thousand mile warranty. I'm just on the page. In today's world, for as much as this car is cost, and for what the fees are for mechanics to work on cars, I think it'd be very foolish for me to go out and buy a Supercharger, blow up the engine, then I'm dead in the water. It's a lot of money, and I'm not going to be tracking the car. If I was a real track guy. Yes, by all means, I would go for the supercharger that's got more power, but a lot of things go with that. You know, the injectors, the intercooler, a bigger fuel pump. I mean, there's just, just more than you getting a lot more power of the car, but then the car starts to have to be more um, updated and other stuff to enable you to really run the heck out of it. Now, some people might be like, why would you do that to the dark horse when that's such the unique car and you really should have done that to the Mustang GT out here that you've already modded. Well, here's the first thing. You know, for the most part, the kids and drive that car. <laughs> there's no way, there's no way that I'm putting a supercharger and 700 horsepower plus car uh, for my daughter to drive. It's not gonna happen. I mean, no way. Uh, the other thing is, I don't feel like this car here is really set up um, as well to handle that extra power. And what I mean by that is you look at this car here, uh, it doesn't have the real true track all-out tires. Has the performance tires, doesn't have the track tires. This doesn't have the Tremec transmission. This has the manual M82 transmission. Um, so for me, I felt like this car here has a better uh, handling package on it, bigger tires and wheels. Uh, it has the nicer Tremec manual transmission. And it's just set up, in my eyes, more to have that personality of having a lot of power, like my GT500s did. And what's so cool is, this will be my first actual high output car I've ever owned with a manual transmission. So all these Hellcats here, the 800 horsepower cars, but these are automatics. The GT500, a big gripe with the GT500 was you couldn't get a manual transmission. You had to go to the Super Snake to be able to get that. Um, this here has a manual transmission. So it's going to be really cool because when you drive this car, it's just going to be like, wow, because you have that manual transmission. Here's the bummer part. I bought the Supercharger and from Lethal Performance, Jared, he's a real character down there in Florida. Cool place to go to get your parts. He's a big Ford guy. And he kind of, it's funny, he's doing what I'm doing. When he got the Raptor, I had the Raptor. He modded his Raptor. When I got the Ford Mustang GT 2024, he got one. Now he has a dark horse. He has two brand new Mustangs. And so it's kind of like, I'm not like personally talking to him or a personal friend, but he knows of me and my channel and he's on the forums. But I just think it's funny. He's, he's you know, it's like we're copying each other, but he's, but he's got all the parts and he gets all the discounts because he's got his own business where he doesn't have to pay all the price. But here's the thing. After I ordered it, I find out that it's going to take eight to ten weeks for them to build that supercharger specific to my car. You have to give it a VIN number in order to order that supercharger so everything's uh, matched to this car. Also, I ordered an H-pipe. So that'll come in hopefully here this week. And so I'm going to go ahead and put an H-pipe on this, probably go up to max exhaust and have him slap that on, which is pretty cool. I know now where to go to get the exhaust modified and a great guy. So I'll do that. So get a little bit more 
noise out of this and uh, a little bit more power. So that's really cool. But it's going to turn into probably, I would say, late January or early February. But here's the downside to me, but I'm kind of, kind of concerned about. Coons Baltimore Ford is a great operation for me right now. They have David, their head service manager, who's been in the industry like 25 years, and he did all this modifications for me at the dealership, and he was very, very nice to me about how much he charged uh, to do all the mods in the car, and which was really cool because he's great friends with Dennis, and he knows I'm great friends with Dennis, so he really took care of me. But here's the breaking news. The breaking news is Kuhn's organization today, December 4th, has officially changed hands to the Asbury Automotive Group. So for those individuals that manage these dealerships, even my great friend Dennis, I don't think Dennis will be watching my video this morning, but if he was, hey Dennis, hope everything's uh, transitioning well for you. Um, what's insured for him? You know, that word insurance can go into so many broad aspects to uh, all the things that we uh, do in our life. And, you know, in so many ways, you feel you're going to be insured, you have a job, right? So, for Coon's organization, today is the day where the uh, change of ownership happens. And for a lot of these managers, the GMs, they don't really know their future. Um, do I think that they're going to eliminate people today? I don't know. It's very interesting. Because the contracts, like Mr. Coons has contracts with these general managers. And these general managers make a lot of money. Yeah, Mr. Coons has been very, uh, very, I guess, you know, he, he's been grateful. And he's rewarded these GMs and these dealerships millions of dollars. I mean, but these guys live there. I mean, I have witnessed, like Steve Brown of Coons Sterling Ford, he worked down there for 20 plus years. Uh, Dennis at Coons Baltimore Ford, he's worked there for 20 plus years. And I've seen these guys, you know, pull six, seven-day work weeks. I've seen these guys that are in the dealership at 6, 6 or in the morning. They're not leaving until 8, 9 o'clock at night. And I'm talking about this is, you know, this is day in, day out. So these guys put in horrendous hours. I don't know for a fact Steve Brown would be at a dealership sometimes seven days a week. Now, for Dennis, the uh, blue law up there in Baltimore, he can't be open on uh, Sunday to sell cars. So they always have Sunday off. But he's still doing something behind the scenes. That's a lot of work. And so these guys know that. And so that's the challenge. And what I'm hearing is the Asbury Automotive Group isn't going to pay these guys what Mr. Coons paid. And even my great friend Dennis, uh, is. I've asked him, what are you doing December 4th? He's like, no, what am I doing December 5th? Huh. You know, me implying, do they, do they shake hands? Do they come to Dennis and say, okay, this lucrative pay you had, that Mr. Coons gave you this insured job through a contract. I mean, that's kind of what we do in life. Insurance is all about you paying into a fund to be insured, to be you know, know that whatever goes wrong, hopefully uh, they're going to pay out the monies for you to fix what you've created. Well, in so many ways, we know that you, you sign a contract with somebody, you're kind of insuring yourself of job security if you do what you're supposed to do. So... Wow, does, does the big payday uh, continue? And there's a challenge. We all know, if you hear you have to take a pay cut to do the same work you've been doing, how many stick around for that? So a lot of change. I mean, it's just incredible how this area, Lithia Automotive Group um, bought out Priority uh, Nissan. Uh, Malloy, Malloy uh, Company, is apparently he's now buying up a bunch of Jerry's uh, local dealerships. But the, the likes of like Asbury Automotive Group, Lithia, you know, these are big, big operators that have tons of dealerships throughout the country. And so you just have to scratch your head, you know, what is going on? What is going on of the big investments of these conglomerates? You know, what do they see? What do they see going in this industry? And I tell you, the pandemic has so created such a business model of the healthiest times ever of the automotive industry of making record profits that everybody, you know, anybody would be like, yeah, just buy a car dealership. That's going to make a ton of money. It's all beautiful. You know, what's there to lose, right? I mean, that's kind of what seems to be the mentality because some of these big guys are buying up all the little guys. 
All right, let's kind of get in the in the office here and uh, talk about the stories. You know, the insurance stories for me. I've got insurance stories. I think I've shared them before in some ways. But one thing that's uh, for me the, the most most recent times uh, story was for me when I got myself in trouble in my Ford Raptor truck. Yeah, does a Ford Raptor deal go? Why why is it that I want that thirty seven Ford Raptor truck. I mean, what is it? You know, just for me, it just doesn't end on the uh, the constant, the next deal. <laughs> the next deal, right? Come on, bubs. Look at that. He's sleeping on the stairs. What a character. So let's get up here and get some heat on. Not real cold, but get up here. And... Right, puppies? And there's my little girl. Hey, little baby. And Kiefer boy, the guy just likes to harass my little baby. Poor old baby. And, uh, all right, let's get in here. The bullhorns, the, the little cars. Just take those out of the box, shouldn't I? And here, as I try to keep it going here without turning off the phone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a weekend. I mean, what a weekend. If you watch my channel, <laughs> you'll see. And I worked all weekend. So I worked part of the day. Then I went and played part of the day, and uh, this iPhone, this iPhone is the worst. It's the worst when it comes to making videos. It's the worst. I spent hours, I spent two hours last night trying to upload basically 30 minutes worth of video content. It's the worst. But I left my Samsung phone here yesterday morning because I had to go to work. And I couldn't, I had to get out of the office. And if I, if I take the phone with me, once I make a video in the morning, if I don't let this upload here on my Wi-Fi in my house and I get on the road, you wouldn't see this video until later this afternoon. So I have to leave this thing in the, here in the morning if I have to get out of the office as fast as possible on the weekend or something. So anyways, so for me, the Ford Raptor truck is such a great truck. And that 37... Now, if you're watching my channel, you'll see I'm back on the Ram TRX. And I even have video from yesterday of showing that with Julia driving down the road in the Ram TRX. And she's like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm like, right. Oh, my gosh. And it's crazy of what's going on in the car market with pricing. I mean, it's just beyond believable. It's beyond believable of what is going on on how expensive all these new vehicles are getting just in front of our eyes and the, and the, and the, the rates the, the prices of these cars are going through the roof and people continue to pay for it yeah i know people are, yeah man mr ice man you're one of them well to degree yeah and to degree knows i'm not stepping up to pay the adm and you know for me so for so many years ago i got myself in trouble on a reckless driving ticket driving my ford uh, raptor i've talked about this before uh, on my channel, but not everybody here has seen my channel because I've had a, I got a lot more viewers than I did a year ago. And so, sure enough, coming up 81, and it was January 2018, just after I had uh, buried my father in law, just a really lousy time in life. And and just coming back home, my, my mind was just mush because I lost my father in law, and he was just a great guy, and we had a good relationship. And he moved to Tennessee. It was just such the greatest thing in the world when we moved down there that opened up the door for me to be able to escape from my everyday life of having to work, which that's what I do. I really do. I mean, just some people, I'm sure, think otherwise, but it's very challenging when you're self-employed. And so when coming back home, my brain just mush. I talked about this at great length before on how I'm behind the pack of cars in my Ford Raptor truck because the guy that's in the front line isn't obeying the speed limit. And it's going below the speed limit, and it's a 70 mile an hour posted speed limit. And we're going miles and miles and miles up 81. And finally, the road goes from two lanes north to three lanes, and, and everybody starts breaking out. And I already knew that there was an undercover cop that came up on me as I was in that pack. But my brain was such mush that I forgot about it. And so as I busted out in that Raptor, and that thing basically hit 100 miles an hour to get around these people. That truck flies. That truck hauls butt. The, the lights came on behind me. And I'm like, and I was just 
you know, it was so aggravating because I knew this guy was back there and I forgot about him. And even, even he came up to the truck. And even he said to me, it was like, this truck is incredible. He's like, you walked away from me. Like, I couldn't even believe in this truck. And he's like, do you know how fast you're going? I, I told him, I was like, you know, I know it was really fast. He's like, well, I had you at 94 and you were still walking. And he said, but I'm going to write you up at 88 so you don't have to go to jail. I'm like, thank you. I appreciate that. And I just told him I just buried my father-in-law and my brain's mush and and he really, he, you know, he was compassionate and he heard it, but here's your ticket. You got to go to court. That was just, oh my gosh. That just totally, you know, demotivated me of uh, driving a fast car anytime soon in my life. Because then I started, I called a lawyer, you know, I had to go through a lot for that ticket. It was bad. And so without going into all the great detail, I went, I, I, I go to court, Lexington, Virginia. Lexington, Virginia, I've told people a story. If you're going through Lexington, Virginia, be careful because that's one of the toughest jurisdictions of, um, of um, traffic violations where the judge is very, very strict. You can go up and look at the different districts of judges and how they come to their final rule against a person that's done bad things in their vehicle, and you can see, you know, convicted, not convicted, you know, guilty, innocent. And so I did a lot of research, and I could see, and I even heard from the, my lawyer. But what I did is I, I, I reached out, and I found the lawyer right next to the courthouse. That's what I did. I was like, I want a lawyer that knows this courthouse. I want the lawyer that knows this judge. I want the lawyer that knows all the ins and outs. And I did. And by doing that, you know, <laughs> many prayers and a lot of sweating for many, many months, that ticket um, was went from a reckless to an improper passing. And how I pulled that off, I'll never tell you on my YouTube channel. It's too personal. But this is what I remember walking out of that courthouse with my lawyer. He says, well, I just saved you $6,000. And I said, well, how did you save me $6,000? He's like, well, your insurance premium on your vehicle would have jumped at least $4,000. And I was like, he's, I said, wait a second. What he, what, he's like, you, if, you're, if you would have been charged here, that reckless driving ticket, your insurance is going to treat you worse than a DUI. What? And I was like, you're, he's like, your insurance premium, you'll, he, he's a lawyer. He said, ask me how I know. You don't think I got myself in trouble like you did in my lifetime? He's like, your insurance. I'm like, I have like 20 vehicles. He's like, yeah, man. Then I just saved you basically maybe $100,000. Wow. Wow. Does anybody know these stories? Yeah, I'm sure anybody watch my channel that has kids. Uh, you know, if, especially for a young adult. I mean, <laughs> and that, and that's and that's the thing. The insurance for me, when that happened to me, I this is no lie. I sold my Raptor, I sold my Hellcats, I totally did a, a, a I totally went down on all the powerful things I had. I just like I gotta go away. I have to take a time out. And I did. So I sold all my nice, powerful cars back in 2018. And just to, you know, because I just was like, if I get another violation, woof. I mean, so in Virginia, it's bad. But what's incredible today is so many people are reckless driving in this area I live. It's crazy. It's just, you know, people don't know. You see people drive down the road 100 miles an hour. And most people don't know how radical it gets. So you're okay, get a speed and take a big deal. But what they don't realize is, your insurance company, I mean, I mean, this is the story for me in 1984 when I bought a brand new Volkswagen GTI and a, a no parking sign whacked me in the back of the head. If you've listened to my videos from a while back, that story of how that all played out. And if anybody here is on my YouTube channel that wants to reach out and hear that whole story again, I can tell you that story, <laughs> how that all played out. But... The whole point of that story is I was just a I was just a twenty year old you know kid, and here I have a crash that's nobody's involved. So in in for the insurance company said no, it's you know midnight, eleven, twelve o'clock. It's a Friday night. I mean you just start putting the things together, and they know that I was uh, intoxicated and I ran off the road from being knocked out and blah blah blah. And so my Folks were giving GTI, the insurance would not total it. I would, this is, this was like 
if I remember right, that GTI was like $8,800, I think. I think it was under ten grand. And I put money down, and I financed, I think, like, I think I financed like six grand. My monthly payment on that thing was like $180 a month. And that back then, you don't get like a four or five year loan. You wouldn't get six, seven year loans. So, so anyways, that car had like, like close to five or six thousand dollars of damage. And they wouldn't total the damn thing. And I was so bummed they should have totaled it because it was never the same. You use the body panel, line sitting, the paint. It was never the same. And so, I, when I got that car back, the insurance, my insurance company reached out to me, and your premium is now like $3,800 a year. So, I, I have a $180 a month car payment. Now, I'm going to have basically like a $300 a month insurance payment. So, what I did, I literally drove that car to Stolman Volkswagen of Tyson's Corner, where I bought that car in 1984. And I handed the keys to one of the guys there and said, here, please take my car. And they gave me a value for it. And, and would you take the car and then pay off my loan and blah, blah, blah. I needed all the paperwork. And I walked home. And the reason I walked home is because I was just so mad. I was so aggravated. And, I was, and that was probably about a 10-mile walk back home from Tyson's Corner to uh, over in Erie Reston where I lived. And so then from basically 19, that was like 1985. I think that was the fall. I, it's just so hard. To, no, because I got a car, I think, in the fall of 83 or whatever. But anyways, the whole point is I then got a Datsun B2, B310 for like 300 bucks. And I drove around uninsured for like four or five years because I couldn't afford the insurance. I was just getting going in my life. And my attitude was if I get in a car crash, it was basically like, okay, what are you going to do? Sue me? Okay, here, here's my socks. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I didn't have anything. Here's my bicycle. So, so, so anybody out there watching the channel, you know, there's so many people here that know that just, wow. If you get yourself in a car accident and it comes back to you, you can know that your insurance premiums can go through the roof. And that's why this morning I was thinking of insurance is because of this transition into the electric vehicles that's happening right in front of our eyes and all this new technology and that's that's what they're talking about is that how the insurance industry is getting more challenged than ever for keeping the, the customer happy because once your car gets damaged and it's this new technology vehicle you're going to be out of a car maybe for months at a time and then the insurance industry would have to provide you a replacement car rental car in the meantime and then you got to find the right body shop in your area that knows how to work on these electric vehicles. And what's interesting is Tesla actually years ago bought in-house their own repair facilities. So Tesla, and you can only guess why, because they know that the average body shop is going to be clueless how to take apart these cars. And another thing, too, is these cars are very much a hazard uh, as well, because if the battery packs get damaged, it's a fire hazard. These cars could potentially eventually start on fire. So there's a lot, you know, there's a lot behind the scenes, even for me as an individual. Do you really ever think about that when you go buy an electric vehicle? I mean, do you really stop and think, wow, if I have something happen to this car, I may not have this car for quite some time. And if they don't total it, then you're really, you know, could be in a bind. I mean, I've heard stories of people at Tesla's being out of their car for six months, maybe even a year. Wow. I mean, can you even imagine how just aggravating that has to be for those people to do that? And then, once again, what's going to happen in the insurance industry as time progresses as more and more people are getting these very expensive vehicles? I mean, it's crazy. And the vehicles, so here's yesterday. If you're watching the Ram TRX video yesterday, it's just beyond believable. If you really watch that video, you should really watch that second or the, I think it was the second, yeah, the second part of the video, I think, is where I show you the, the sticker on that Ram TRX. So you just go back to 2022, fully optioned out, Ram TRX, and it's $101,000. It's already way too much money. But now, 2024, the exact same truck, it's the exact same truck. I mean, they've, done, they've not updated the Hellcat engine, have more power. They've done nothing. It's the same truck. It's now $119,000, $121,000.
So just in two mile years, they've jacked the price close to twenty thousand dollars. That's why, if I could get, I've always been the page to get that a Ram truck for like eighty grand. That's always my thing. But this is what you have to think about: is the manufacturers jacking the price of these cars to try to keep the used market healthy? I mean, think it through. I mean, what are they doing? Why are they charging so much money? Another part of me says that when the Ford Raptor R came out, that was that was like a hundred and fourteen, hundred twenty-one thousand dollar. Yeah, it's like a hundred eleven, hundred twenty. It just depends on how you option it out. And part of me says Rams like look at Ford's getting away with. Ford's getting away with people lining up to buy these Raptor R's, and dealerships are getting twenty-five grand, fifty grand over. And be so lucky to get one. So I think I think Ram was like, look, these guys get it. We can get it. Just check the price. People buying these hundred thousand dollar cars, you're telling me ten, twenty grand difference, and that's what goes on. You just know behind the scenes, like you really think that these guys still can't buy these things. So it's just wow. It's just uh, here they're showing on Fox Business an AI powered tractor trailer, artificial intelligence. How do you feel about that, right? As the truck drives down the road all by itself. We'll have more conversations on that on another day. So, uh, anyways, um, yeah, so how does that all play out? Uh, you know, I don't know. And then the thing is, that Ford Raptor truck, 37, to me, that's more than enough power. I like the Ford, I like the Ford Raptor personally better. I like the 37. I like the way, I just like the looks, like the interior. I just like, I'd rather have that than the Ram TRX in so many ways, even though the, the problem with Ram TRX, it's a 10 mile per gallon vehicle. Somebody like, yeah, what's the big deal? Well, I don't know. I mean, it does get old. The gas tank gauge moved pretty quick. And then, I mean, it's like the Ford Raptor 37. Yeah, it's going to get 14, 15, maybe 16, 17, doubtful. But, but yeah. But I just like the way that truck looks. I just, and it rides great. And I just, I've been wanting one for so long. Ram TRX, right. If I could get the right deal on that, yeah, but they're still so salty. They're just still so pricey in my eyes. Um, they just, ah, I wish they would go down in value. But once again, is the manufacturers intentionally making the price of these vehicles higher to try to keep the used market at a healthier, um, higher rate? Well, wish that was tr theory is true because my Ford Lightning truck, as they raise the prices on these lightning trucks, it hasn't done anything for that. It's lost value. As the computer truck now, the cyber truck, has taken over being the you know the highlight of everybody wanting one. But here's the thing. There's only a select few people even got these things. I mean, so for the computer truck, for everybody to be thinking these things are be coming out in the masses, it ain't going to happen. It's, I mean, it's challenging for Tesla to bring this truck to the market, and it'll be very interesting to see what their capability is and that's a whole other thing for a truck if you see the videos on the Haggerty Jason with Haggerty does the video on that truck and it shows it getting that side impact from like a 3300 pound um, dummy vehicle to hit it sideways a T-bone and you see how that thing it gets damaged but nothing like it would be on a typical like my Ford truck and you only imagine getting T-bone in that Ford F-150 Lightning truck, what it's going to do to the battery pack. It's going to be a disaster. It would be bad. I mean, that's where the potential of a fire, that's where those things, you know, that's where you could possibly be in the car. You get injured, you're unconscious, and all of a sudden the battery pack underneath you has uh, caught on fire. I mean, these type of things happen. It's not comforting to think about that, but, it's, you know, you can have an automotive ICE vehicle per se catch on fire too. So that's a very uh, big concern. But here's the thing. Watching that video with Jason and seeing the key guys that ever saw development that truck, they talk about to be able to create that stainless steel that's so solid. They they had to design this incredible new technology of being able to bend that uh, stainless steel with air. You know, so you can only imagine the, the design of the equipment that Tesla has to make these doors in this stainless steel and so think about a body shop you know how's a body shop going to repair that i mean i just can't see it and i think that's where 
that turns into a 20, 30, 40, 50, you know, it's a $50,000 repair bill. So it's all very interesting in how the green agenda for the insurance, could you say that in so many ways that the green agenda is all about insurance, that it's trying to insure a better um, time? For the future, isn't that what insurance is in so many ways? It's a gamble of what's going to happen in the future, especially if you have life insurance, you have health insurance. I mean, it's always about your spending money for the what if. That's really what it really boils down to. And so, the green agenda in so many ways, we're now paying to insure the future of what the green agenda thinks will make things <clears throat> safer and better. But it's extremely expensive. And so for the electric vehicle market, I think the people are going to start to realize that this so-called buying this electric vehicle saves you, all this money, saves you all this money. And in the end, you're going to be like, scratch your head because now you pay $100 more a month or $200 more a month for your insurance policy. If you only drive a few miles back and forth to work, how did that save you any gas? I mean, a person that drives 20 miles to work every day, 10 miles to work every day, if you factor just that the person drives 50, drives 200 miles a month in their gas car. And they have a freaking miser car that gets 30 miles a gallon. So if you figure that, what's that, you know, what is that um, 200 by 30? So you take, two, you take 200 divided by 30, which it's like 15 or something, right? I don't know, what the hell is it? Six, it's six gallons. So seven gallons of gas. That even at the highest rate of $5 is 35 bucks. So a guy goes out and trades in his Honda or his Toyota for an electric vehicle, miser vehicle, and his insurance is $100 more a month. How'd he get ahead? He didn't. I mean, <laughs> right? I mean, in so many ways. And that's where it's all going. And now they're talking about, I've talked about it many days, and I'm going to kind of end it here because it gets to be too long a video. Is you know the pain by the mile, pain by the mile. That's where it's all going to go too. That's where it's all going to go. It's 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 coming. You're going to be being. You already do. You already pay by the mile going down the toll road. But they're really going to implement. I guarantee it, especially in California, to try to get people the hell off the roads. Um, they're going to start charging by the mile. So it doesn't matter if you buy your electric vehicle. You tell everybody, ah ha ha, I don't go to the gas station anymore. Like yeah. Who cares? It isn't about the gas station anymore. It's about your federal government and state government have passed laws that now force you to pay by the mile. So you, it doesn't matter. You can be you. I guess if you walked or even rode your bicycle, you probably have to pay to go by the mile. Who knows? All right, leave it at that, everybody. Hey, thanks for everybody watching my channel, and uh, stay tuned for does the Ford Raptor deal play out today? I mean, one thing's for sure. I'm not doing two deals at one time. I'm going to see if the Ford Raptor deal goes down before I get on the Ram TRX. And, man, you know, it's just, I don't know what it is. It's just something about that Ram TRX. It's just like it ain't meant to be. It just isn't like meant to be. Why is that? I don't know. And I really wanted that other TRX that that guy's getting in Switzerland. Watch watch my yesterday's video, and you'll, you'll learn more about that and all that good stuff. So, everybody, thanks for watching my channel. As always, God bless. Stay safe. And you see another video later today? I don't know. So have a great day. Stay safe.